Okay, what am I doing standing outside a 72 Volvo 1800 ES, one of the rarest Volvos? Well, I wanted to use it to explain to you what exactly is a software-defined vehicle and what is it. So a critical piece of a software-defined vehicle is what's called a central vehicle controller. It's a gateway type box that takes up a lot of the subsystems that have traditionally been on a vehicle like this. Braking systems, power systems, power charging, even controlling the seats and the windows and things like that. It's typically running uh, silicon from like an NXP, a lot of real-time software on it, and it's kind of the plumbing and electrical part of a software-defined vehicle. Another key part of a software-defined vehicle is what's called the IVI, or In-Vehicle Information System. So an IVI system would be all these kind of funky gauges, of course they'd be displayed in a beautiful LCD screen or OLED screen with a big wraparound. So the technology that has to drive all that, typically like a Qualcomm Snapdragon chip running some version of Android, is what we'd have as an IVI. It also would include something called ADAS for the uh, automatic um, driver adaptation system. Uh, a lot of AI workloads can be run on this. And of course, you'd also include some sort of 5G radio. So the central vehicle controller and the in-vehicle infotainment system actually work together as two subsystems inside a software-defined vehicle connected to a cloud like AWS or Azure or Google over a 5G radio. It's really one of the most interesting new edge compute platforms that's out there. And that's about it.